Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak. And before we get into today's video, I just want to let you know that all of my videos are shot about a month and a half before they end up getting released. And the reason that's relevant is because in today's video, you're gonna see that moment where I was changing out a GoPro battery. I took my hand off my fishing pole and a fish grabbed the whole thing and took it over the side. You might remember that from about a month and a half ago when I put out a call asking for a little bit of help to replace that fishing pole, because as you can imagine, being an independent boat builder is not a lucrative profession. And if I'm gonna keep making fishing videos, I've gotta have a fishing pole. And so I just wanted to thank everyone who contributed. We were able to replace the fishing pole, so we were able to keep making videos. And we were also able to buy a heavier duty fishing pole, which you're gonna see in upcoming videos where we start pulling up the really big fish. So thank you very much to everyone who helped me out with that. Enjoy the video. So you want to tell us what you're doing here right now? Well, uh, we just made camp at a new location right next to this lovely little mangrove canal. And I was setting up the boat, but I decided it would be a great idea to stop and cast into the canal after dark. So basically, I cast it into a mangrove tree and we got to go rescue my lure. for the next challenge. I'm just gonna step off here. I would like to say that will teach me not to cast in the dark, but the reality is I'm gonna do it again. This launch, this is incredible. Like curbside service. Turn on the GoPro. Turn on the other GoPro. Don't fall in. Don't fall in the water. <laughs> no, I'm gonna have to make a run for it. <laughs> run and jump. You got this. <laughs> okay, I think you can just put the drive in. All right, take us away, Captain. Yeah, it looks okay. You did a good job. Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak. Once again, we are down here in Baja, Mexico, testing out the new pedal drive canoe system. If you don't know what that is, make sure you check the link on the screen right now. That's gonna take you to a video that talks all about the design history and the evolution of this particular small boat. And if you don't know who I am, because you're new here, once again, my name is Brian. I've been building skin on frame boats for over 20 years. I offer online video courses and plan sets teaching people how to do this type of construction. So anyways, we're down here in Baja, more or less in the same location as the last video. Over the last video or two, you saw me out in the canoe solo. I was trying to learn how to fish the mangroves and somewhat failing at that. I really want to catch a black snook or any kind of pargo, otherwise known as a snapper. It's not exactly the right season for that right now, and the tides are a little bit weird, but right now we are centered right on top of the high tide. It's early in the morning, and we are working our way down a really narrow channel. It's gonna be a little bit of a short fish today because we're gonna to have to get back to our camp before the tide starts ripping out of this channel right here. But I'm hoping that now that we are set up again with the outrigger system, I've got Liz in the boat with me. Liz always catches more fish than I do. So hopefully the fishing gods will smile upon us and we'll have a great adventure to share with you guys today. So right now, I'm using this Rapala that was recommended to me called a glass shad wrap for those of you fishermen out there. It's nice and rattly, it suspends in the water, it seems to run about two feet deep. And the big challenge of this kind of fishing is if I get a fish on, I've got to basically just yank it right into the boat because as soon as a fish goes around a mangrove root, you're done. You're never gonna be able to get that fish back unless you wanna go scuba diving. I don't know if we're going to catch any fish, but this is really cool. Oh, 
Oh, I got a fish. I got a fish. Okay, this is this is a significant fish. What do I got? What do I got? Okay, I caught one of these the other day. This is a this is a type of grouper I haven't seen before. Check this out, guys. So you guys might notice that I'm fishing triples right now, which is a little bit weird considering how much time I've spent evangelizing for single barbless hooks on this channel. But the reality is this is our second to last day here. And if I have a chance to catch a snook, I don't want to miss that fish. And so there's definitely going to be a little bit of collateral damage. Although I'm finding that my triple release technique is getting a little bit better here. Okay, so there's one hook. There we go. All right, first fish. For once it was me and not you, but that probably has to do with the fact that you're not actually fishing right now. Oh no. Ah, uh, okay. The reel of shame. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Oh, Jesus, really? Okay, well, that's embarrassing. Now I'm going to reel us to the other side of the channel. You know, if you stand up and get this lure, it'll look like you did it. <laughs> this will be great TV if you fall in the water. I know. <laughs> that wasn't so bad though. I mean, that was way better than what I did last night. So right now Liz is tying a marker onto the mangroves. That way when we're coming back, we actually know where to go to get back to our camp because there's a million of these little channels in there and it would be very easy to get lost. Okay, let's just pause here and fish both sides of this. It makes sense that the bait fish come up here and the predators sit at the mouth waiting for them to come by. Oh, got a fish, got a fish. Okay, I gotta pull it away from wherever it is. It's not big. Oh, well, it's active. It feels like a palometta, I mean, it's fighting. Oh, no, it's another one of these grouper, okay. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Okay. There we go. All right, guy, beautiful fish. <laughs> Don't tip over. It's not worth it. It's coffee. Okay, maybe it's worth it, but you wouldn't be able to drink it. I just get okay I got some kind of fish this one's weird I'm not sure what this is it hit it hit on the fall whoa it's a big halibut whoa this is a decent sized halibut um this could be lunch why don't we uh why don't we keep this guy nice oh shit oh damn it Oh, oh, that sucks. That was a night. Nice, that was one of the bigger ones we've caught. Oh, that sucked. Well, today is just not our day. The fish here are winning. Did you just catch another tree? I don't want to talk about it. Who put these trees here? You got it? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. You worked hard for that. <laughs> I'd like to leave the bush now. You got a fish? Oh wow, you got a Corvina. Look at that. This is Liz's first Corvina. 
You know what? I'm just gonna kill it because we know we're gonna keep this for food. Okay. All right, a little bit of graphic violence here. Sorry, guys. Okay, so, good food. Oh, I want to change the GoPro, but I don't want to miss this fishing. Okay, how fast can I change a GoPro battery? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh sh! Oh, f a fish just grabbed it. I set it down and I could see the lure oh. and a fish just literally came up and grabbed the lure and pulled my pole in. Oh. I mean, the only chance we have right now is to snag it with your pole. All right, so it's about six hours later and the tide is as low as it's going to get today. And I've gone ahead and removed the outrigger system from the canoe here and I've plugged the hole in the drive box. That way we can just use this as a normal canoe so we can navigate these really narrow, shallow channels. And the mission is we're going to head back out the way that we went out this morning. We're going to go right back to where we think we lost that pull and we're going to see if we get lucky and whatever fish grabbed it went around a mangrove root and basically try to get our pull back. I don't know what the probability of success here is, but I feel like we've got at least a decent chance because usually when fish near, near the mangroves grab a lure, they try to get straight back into the mangroves. And it was probably a grouper, which is definitely grouper behavior. So let's head out on another adventure and hopefully I can get my stuff back. This thing actually works really nice as a canoe. You sound so surprised. I don't know. I'm just so used to using it as a pedal canoe and as an outrigger canoe. It just glides. It's lovely. Oh. What? I just saw a crab run away from us right into the arms of a bear crab and bit it. It's amazing how every bit of drag adds a lot of resistance, you know? So the flippers add drag, the outrigger adds drag, the rudder adds drag. And when we take all that out, we got like I know, it's just really nice glide, which is why I built the system this way. I mean, a pure pedal drive canoe would be too much of a compromise for me because there are times that it really makes more sense just to use it as a normal canoe and I would not want to deal with all that drag being there all the time, not to mention all the extra weight. Okay, so it looks like it's getting deep enough here. We're just gonna pull out the retainer pins and I'll show you what this thing looks like here. So that's the plug. And once again, it's not keeping the bottom of the water tight. It's just keeping waves from splashing in. And it's also reducing the slot drag from this massive hole down here. Let's go ahead and slide this down in here. I'm gonna drop the rudder. And we are ready to pedal. That was kind of fun. We should go canoeing more often. This is way deeper than the mangroves that I was fishing in before. We're almost to camp. <laughs> I'm not giving up. We can make it. We can get around the stick. 
All right. <sighs> well, that was a thing that happened. Let's go get some snacks. Snacks. <sighs> well, guys, I was hoping to finish this video out with us getting the pull back and there would be a giant snook attached to it and we would eat it for dinner and it would make a great story. But unfortunately, we just ended up losing the pull. Anyways, uh, to finish this video out on a positive note, it was still a beautiful day on the water, and despite everything that happened, I am very grateful just to have the privilege to be down here fishing in the first place. Also, we caught some interesting fish. We got that really cool looking grouper. We got that halibut that we almost got into the boat. Liz picked up her first corvina, which she also filleted. Very first time filleting a fish. She did a great job. So. Hopefully this video was interesting for you guys. Um, as usual, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also, if you're interested in the skin on frame boats that you saw in this video, make sure you check out our website, capefalconkayaks.com, where I have a bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can also find us on Instagram, at Cape Falcon Builds, where we post videos and photos of whatever we're working on in the shop or whatever we're testing out on the water. And you can find that same content on the Cape Falcon Kayak Facebook page as well. So that's it for now. Take care, be safe on the water. I will see you next time.